Hi, Assalamualaikum dan salam sejahtera So, today with my new video, I would like to share with you guys I would like to teach solubility So, can you please refer to textbook page 109 Alright, so what is solubility? Alright, in your textbook, the definition is a bit long But today, I would like to simplify the definition By give you so many terms that you need to understand now, we look at the definitions of the solubility. Solubility is a maximum amount of solute that can dissolve in 100 ml of solvent at specific temperature. Apa maksud dia ni? Pahak, susahnya nak faham kan? Alright, sebenarnya, solubility is the maximum amount of solute. Berapa banyak, berapa maximum solute tu? Alright, that can dissolve in 100 ml of solvent. Yang boleh larut di dalam 100 ml solvent at specific temperature. So, panjang kan? Ha, jadi, cikgu tak nak lah go to, to the definition lebih banyak. Sebab today, cikgu lebih kepada nak ceritakan term dia. The term yang you need to understand. Alright, bila cakap solubility, eh apa ni solubility? You tak dapat gambaran, betul tak? Tengok definition pun macam blur-blur je kan? Ha, so, solubility kita nak senang faham, kita kena compare dia macam ni. Easily dissolve and difficult to dissolve. Kita nak tengok solute that is easy to dissolve and solute that difficult to dissolve. Okay, so kita nak tengok solubility. First kali, I need you to understand the term of the solubility. Alright, solubility, we have high solubility and we have low solubility. Alright, macam mana nak faham? If I said sugar is a high solubility, sugar has a high, higher solubility. So, maksudnya sugar is easily dissolved. Ha, easily dissolve dalam apa? Dalam solvent lah Di sini cikgu buat contoh sugar and water Now, kita tengok low solubility Low solubility means solute difficult to dissolve Contoh, alright Ambil uh, sand, pasiak ha, dengan ayak Cikgu cuba masukkan Pasiak tu boleh larut tak? Susah nak larut dan memang tak larut So, kita katakan low solubility Solute that is easy to dissolve Okay, apa-apa saja bahan yang senang larut Kita katakan dia high solubility Apa-apa saja bahan ataupun solute yang very difficult to dissolve Maksudnya dia adalah low solubility Itu dari segi term nah. Tadi, alright, kita belajar berkaitan dengan term high solubility and low solubility so, sekarang we going to learn about rate. Okay, bila cakap pasal rate, mesti involve time. Kalau that solute has higher solubility rate, apa maksud dia? That solute has higher solubility rate. Okay, you kena you kena tengok four points ni. Apa maksud higher rate? Okay, higher rate of solubility. Higher rate of solubility maksudnya that solute take less time to dissolve in a solvent. Dia ambil masa yang singkat untuk larut dalam pelarut tu. Maksudnya apabila dia ambil masa yang singkat to dissolve, it takes a less time to dissolve means that that solute is easily dissolved. So when that solute is easily dissolved, it shows that that solute has high solubility. Senang kan? Alright, so now kita tengok pula kepada term low rate of solubility. What does it mean by low rate of solubility? Low rate of solubility means that process involve a longer time. It takes a very long time. It takes a very long time for that solute to dissolve in a solvent. So, what does it mean? It means that that solute is very difficult to dissolve, very hard to dissolve in a solute. It means that that solute has low solubility. So, apa-apa sahaja yang susah nak larut dalam air ataupun nak larut dalam solvent, it shows that that solute has lower solubility rate dan juga low solubility. Bila cakap pasal rate, jangan lupa dia mesti involve time. Higher rate means that it takes a shorter time. Lower rate, apa maksud dia? It takes a 
longer time. Boleh faham nah? So sekarang kita nak masuk kepada the factors that affect solubility. Ada three factors that affect solubility according to your textbook and syllabus. Jom kita discuss. Right, so now kita nak pergi kepada factors that affect solubility. So according to the textbook, we have three factors that affect solubility. But before we discuss any further, tolong tekan subscribe untuk cikgu to show that you support me. Thank you. Now, kita pergi kepada the first factors which is the temperature of solvent. Alright, untuk further discuss about factors, cikgu nak bagi contoh yang paling senang. Solvent dekat sini, cikgu nak pakai air which is water. And solute dekat sini, I will use sugar. Boleh? Solute is a sugar. Uh, solvent is a water. Now, the first factors is temperature of solvent. Second factors is the rate of stirring. And the third factors is the size of solute. Now, to further uh, discuss about this topic, can you please refer to your textbook, page 10109. Boleh ya? Okay. So now, we go to the first factors, which is temperature of solvent. Okay. Kalau you tengok dekat sini, temperature of solvent. Alright. The problem statement is, does the temperature of solvent affect the rate of solubility? Hmm. So, the hypothesis, the early conclusion that we have is, the higher the temperature of solvent, the higher the temperature of solvent, lagi panas ayang itu, lagi tinggi temperature ayang, the higher the rate of solubility. The higher the rate of solubility. So, just now cikgu dah discuss kan, higher rate of solubility means that solute easy to dissolve. It takes a less time to dissolve. So, adakah the higher the temperature of solvent, lagi panas ayam, Lagi senang gula itu larut dalam air hmm. So, apa yang dia buat adalah dia buat simple experiment dekat sini Right? Dia buat very simple experiment We have two beaker which is beaker K and beaker L And both beaker has the same amount of distilled water This one 100 ml of distilled water This one also 100 ml Kemudian, it use a table salt Dalam ni dia pakai garam ha, Nampak? Table salt, table salt. And, kita tengok sekejap, dia punya constant variable. Ada tak dia bagi? Yes. So, kita tengok constant variable. The volume of solute. That's why, kedua-dua beaker tadi use 100 ml of distilled water. Kemudian, the rate of stirring, kacau sama lah. Jangan kacau laju satu bekas, pelan satu bekas. No, cannot. Both bekas mesti kacau at the same rate. Kacau slow-slow sama-sama. And then, lagi satu, the size of solute. Okay, ha, so that three factors, uh, that another two factors tu kita kena constantkan dia. So, nak kita tengok dekat sini. In the first beaker K, ha, dia letak table salt and dia letak 100 ml of distilled water. Dia stirkan. Okay, kemudian dia tengok, dia ambil masa berapa lama untuk this table salt dissolve. Habislah semua dissolve di dalam water. Dan lagi satu, dia panaskan. Nampak? Dia panaskan that distilled water tu. Ha. So, bila dia panaskan that distilled water tu, what happen? This solvent become hot, increase in temperature. Then, dia ambil masa. Alright? Ambil masa untuk table salt tu dissolve di dalam solvent tu. And then, you rasa-rasa apa yang akan berlaku? Ha. Semestinya, alright, semestinya, Air yang panas kan akan melarutkan garam tu dengan lebih cepat. So, it shows that hypothesis kita is accepted. The higher the temperature of solvent, the higher the rate of solubility. Boleh faham ya? Ha, lagi panas ayak tu, lagi cepat garam tu larut. Ha, that's why kan kadang-kadang kita nak masak ayak gula untuk raya. Ha, ni nak raya ni, ha, ni posa ni. Bila kita masak ayam gula, means kita nak buat uh, concentrated uh, sugar kan. Nak buat concentrated syrup. Ha. So, kita akan masak atas dapur bagi panas. Ataupun, uh, you boleh compare kalau you buat air teh o. Ha. Teh o dekat rumah, you pakai, you letak gula, you letak air sejuk dengan you letak gula, letak ayam panas. Ha. So, gula yang dalam ayam panas tu lagi cepat larut. Easily to dissolve means 
higher rate of solubility or high rate a uh, high solubility. Alright, so now we go to the second factor which is rate of stirring. Rate of stirring tu laju atau pelan kacau. Ha, bila kita kacau laju, senang larut ke susah larut? Easily to dissolve ke difficult to dissolve? Ha, kalau kita pakai low rate of stirring, easily to dissolve ke susah to dissolve? Boleh ya? Eh? So now, can you go to page 110? Dekat sini dia ada buat eksperimen yang paling senang. Alright. Dia masukkan the same amount of distilled water. Alright. Both beaker have 100 ml of distilled water. And then they put a same amount of stable salt. And after that, beaker K, <coughs> dia stir slowly. But beaker L, dia stir fast. So, you rasa which one yang akan dissolve faster? Yes, good. Beaker L. So, once beaker L dissolve faster, maksudnya, selute in beaker L, alright, <coughs> has high solubility. Take a less time to dissolve. So, that's our hypothesis is accepted. Ha, hypothesis cakap apa? The higher the rate of stirring, the higher the rate of solubility. Lagi laju kita kacau means lagi cepat solute to dissolve. Alright, now kita beri kepada next one is the size of solute. Alright, for the size of solute, kita tengok eksperimen ni. Hmm. Ha, dekat sini dia pakai sugar. Alright, beaker K, it use 1 gram of fine sugar. And beaker L, they use 1 gram of sugar cube. Ha, yang ni dalam bentuk cube and dalam bentuk uh, fine sugar. Dalam bentuk halus dalam bentuk serbuk. So, you rasa which one yang bila kita kacau, dia, which one bila kita larutkan dia dalam 100 ml of distilled water, which one yang akan uh, dissolve dulu, yang mana akan larut dulu? Yes, very good. Beaker L. Eh, sorry. Beaker K. Kenapa beaker K? Because it has fine sugar. Alright. Dia punya surface area increase. Meningkat nak dikompakkan this one. This one easy to dissolve. Alright. So, senang. Cikgu ada contoh kat sini lah. Fine sugar dengan rock sugar. Ha, ini adalah rock sugar. This one is a fine sugar. Nampak dia halus. So, Ini 49 gram and this one also 49 gram. Kata kalau cikgu campur the same amount of water, ni cikgu kacau. Cikgu kacau, kacau, kacau slowly. Definitely this one akan lambat dissolve betul. Akan lambat larut. It shows that this sugar cube has low solubility. You faham? And this one, fine sugar. Bila cikgu larutkan dalam air the same amount of water with this one, definitely this fine sugar easy to dissolve. So, means this fine sugar has high solubility. Boleh faham nak? Low solubility, difficult to dissolve. High solubility, easy to dissolve. Boleh? So, senang saja habis dah topik solubility. Tapi, hmm, kata dah habis dah. Ha, tapi tak habis lagi. Tapi, katakanlah, cikgu bagi dekat awak seketul ini. Ha, tolong bagi cara dekat cikgu macam mana kita nak increasekan this solubility of solute ni. Cuba ikut awak. Ha, bagi. Nah, ambil. Ha, nah, nah, ambil. Ha. Tolong bagi tahu dekat cikgu how to increase the solubility of this rock sugar. Macam mana you nak buat? Nombor satu. Definitely, you masukkan this cube sugar dalam air, pa air panas. Betul tak? Ha, bila masuk air panas, dia cepatlah larut. Kemudian, kacau cepat-cepat dan lagi satu size of solute. Macam ni kita nak kaitkan dengan size of solute. Very simple. You ambil this rock sugar, you crush dia. Betul? Once you crush, it will become a fine sugar. So, it will easily dissolve. So, itulah caranya how we want to increase the solubility of cube sugar. So, sekian saja untuk video kali ini. Kita jumpa lagi dalam video seterusnya. Bye. Assalamualaikum.